Hello, welcome to Bangkok Chit Chat with Andrew and Andy. Uh, before we get going, we would just like to thank you so much, all the, and we know who you are, the people that subscribed and liked uh, the first show. And uh, we got a bit of feedback. Uh, my son said that I shouldn't wear shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the long trousers today. So, <laughs> so we're, we're learning. Have you had a good uh, couple of weeks? Uh, yes, I think it's been uh, very busy. You know, the, new, the start of the new year. Uh, it's always busy for us. Yeah. Uh, different projects running. So yeah. You mean this crazy. is a studio clip cube media? Yeah, from the studio yeah. point of view, but also other filming and the online uh, online online marketing side, Facebook yeah. design, print. Uh, yeah, we're getting. Very, 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 very busy. It's just people just back uh, and they've got, their, they've got their budgets approved. Yeah. Oh, yeah, so. You've got to work hard now. Yes. Okay, that's yeah. okay. Which is good, I, but it isn't really work. I enjoy it. I enjoy well, you it. just live upstairs. So. Yeah, well, yeah. No, sort not of, upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Thailand has been named ninth in the top ten of best places in the world for retirees. Wow. That's according to Living Magazine. And they said the Chiang Mai, Nakhon, Panom, Nong uh, Kai, uh, in particular were mentioned for the attraction of wonderful nature, the quiet surroundings, and the possibility of economical living, all made for a fantastic retirement opportunity. So there were, I mean, we've been talking about this in other interviews. I, I, I don't know if they're retired. I know a lot of people in Patia live off their pensions from the UK. Right. Do they get the whole pension? Or because they're no, living... Well, I understand if, uh, from the UK point of view, I'm not sure about elsewhere, but uh, it's, it's not indexed. In the UK, your, your pension is indexed. Uh, so it relates to the cost, the ch changing cost of living. Right. But when you're overseas and here, there's certain countries where they, they, they do continue doing that. Mm. Uh, but in Thailand, no, basically, you... you are, are fixed at that rate. Well, actually, Thailand was named the second best place in Asia. Who's the first? I don't know, it doesn't say. Trust you to ask that question. <laughs> God. No, da, 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 I think Thailand's an excellent place to retire. It is it's good. But I, I'm not sure if I could uh, live in uh, the boondogs. Yeah? Uh, I think uh, it would need some, some excitement, but I don't know yeah. how, these, how, how much these uh, areas have, have developed. Would you, live, would you live in Pattaya if you had a choice? Um, uh, it wouldn't be my first choice, really. Uh, I think Paddy is, is great, and I know a lot of people staying there, and they're very, very and happy. And the surrounding there. area. But I think probably, because I've lived in Bangkok for, what, 30 years, it'd be difficult mm. to, to move. And I've got so many friends, I know where everything is. You well, know, that's the old comfortable pair of slippers, isn't it? You know, you feel yeah. comfortable. I yeah. think wherever, wherever you lay your hats. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, Paul Young. Yeah, you basically, yeah. You, you, you adjust to it. But uh, yeah. I'd go to Chiang Mai, I think, if I had to move. Although that's getting busier and busier now. Or well, do you want to be in the mountains and the cool? Or do you want to be at the beach? It, I it's, wouldn't. It's uh, yeah, I lived in Spain on the beach, and you do take it for granted. And I know people live in Patia. And I say, when's the last time you went down to the beach? Um, let me think. You know, I mean, you imagine if you moved down there, oh, I'll be there every day. No, well, I'd so rather go to these places on holiday or for a few days and then come back to. Is it not a bit like when people buy uh, buy or rent a condo? They say it's got a swimming pool and they never use it. Yeah, true. true. Well, it's it's like a fact that buying a, a pool, buying a boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, oh, no, no, no. All right, now this is interesting. Poll results from a website. Uh, the, the website is called PatiaUnlimited.com, so it's from Patia. Five hundred Farang were asked the question. Is Thailand still smiling? Because when I came here, the big thing was the land of smiles. Mm. Which I think it was. Well, um, three percent. Yeah. Well, three percent said yes, but only outside tourist destinations. In other words, they smile in the suburbs and they smile, you know, nowhere where there's tourists, basically speaking. Are we? Are we are the tourists are a novelty, or uh, well, or, or is it just a? Well, let's go through the poll and then I'll give you my thoughts on it. 13% um, said no, they have become wary of foreigners. 13% uh, said yes to the, the, the Thai sense of fun is always ever present. They are jovial, mm -hmm. jovial yeah. ways, I, I think so. 18% said that no, they are strictly business only, and that's 18%. I don't think they are business only, I think it's in the culture to do business because a lot of them are like mum and pup shops and they're what, you know, Thais open up businesses all the time, but they're not corporate, mega, well, they do that as well, but there's many man in the street that has his own business. Yes? Uh, yeah, but I, th I think uh, any city uh, or anywhere, especially capital cities, uh, there's there's a, a more coldness rat uh, race rat, rat race. race there's more responsibilities there's more worries you know people now get more credit 
credit issues, I think, yes, the land of smiles, certainly when you go up country, uh, yes, people are very, very friendly. Uh, I think. Well, the, this is frightening. I think, I think, I think the two from, from tourist destinations, uh, I think it's still friendly, but I think there's also been a point where there's uh, a feeling of entitlement. Yeah. Well, at top of the list, it was yes, 36% uh, said yes, but the smile is no longer genuine. And that was the got the most votes. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe maybe that's right. Maybe people not happy and they're happy in their job. Or you would under the circumstances. Yeah. Uh, but I think there is. I mean, I I've noticed this thing is an entitlement. Uh, I think you know, some some foreigners can just be downright rude. Well, th when I go to say my Seven Eleven in my store in my area, I always get a nice smile. Not because they know me, because I go to different ones. Got so many. Uh, there is my regular one. But uh, they, they always smile. But when I was in Patia last, I remember going to a 7-Eleven. It was efficient, but it was very um, cold. No smile. And I think, like some of those uh, answers to that poll, I think some tourists let themselves down in yeah, behaviour. And, and I think if, if you're continually getting people who are, are maybe rude or, or uh, <laughs> the, the staff obviously begin to have a negative attitude or they're extremely busy and they haven't got time for chit chat or, mm. but I, one thing I have noticed and I've mentioned this to some Thai friends is when you go to a 7-Eleven uh, I always taught my daughter to say please and thank you Yeah. Uh, so every time I remember one time we went into a 7-Eleven she didn't say thank you and I said why wouldn't you say thank you mm, just not right? you, and you, you, but, and there, mm. I do see this where people just they go and they buy the product and there's barely a word passed yeah mm. Uh, um, um, some of the staff can be say kokum ka or ka or whatever, whatever uh, but others are just taking just walking. Well, I, I just yeah. wonder what, why that why that is because well, from the customer's point of view or the the, the shop assistant uh, from from both. Uh, but I just see the people who who are buying something. I look at it from that that yeah. point of view as well. They just show them a bag why. of crisps and they. But it's maybe the way we're, 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 we're brought up. I mean, uh, if you, uh, when I was a kid, you walk by, somebody say, hello, good morning. Uh, you, don't, you don't get that here. Maybe it's a, a fear of engagement. Yeah. Well, we've uh, covered this in one of our shows that hasn't gone out yet, like political, political correctness. correctness. Yeah, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know, don't know the answer, mm. to be honest. I'm not, I, don't, I don't really think much about it. Uh, mm. you, you, you adapt to wherever you are. And if you don't like it, you leave. All right, well, moving on, one of the biggest topics over the last couple of weeks has been the pollution. Mm. And uh, I've noticed it on the SkyTrain, more and more people wearing masks. Uh, it's actually, Thailand's deployed what they do up country when they have, you know, no rain. They do the rain-making thing, yep. which is throwing chemicals at, well, to plant. used to have a dance to do that, didn't they, in America? Well, when I first came to <laughs> Thailand, right, when they say rain-making, <laughs> I honestly had this chief, Indian chief with his whole thing going, <laughs> running around a fire. I had no idea that, you know, rain making planes, they seed the clouds in an effort to, yeah. to, to make it. Uh -huh. So anyway, that's been going on. Um, well, bas basically, public discontent has surfaced on Thai social media and television with pollution related hashtags trending and TV hosts advertise, advising sorry, viewers on the types of face masks they should wear. Not only fashionable ones, but should you have the full on... Well, there's a picture in one of the magazines with the guy with like... He's like in World War One, you know, with a mustard gun. Well, there, there was a, a, a read in a newspaper that they were actually saying that, that normal masks will not make any difference uh, because the particles are so small they can actually get through the masks. Now I know you've got other ones which are for motorcycles will use, you've got charcoal and everything built into it, maybe they, they'll work, but the, the normal ones you'd buy, uh, you know, very thin fibre, yeah? mm. uh, they're saying it makes no difference. However, we talk about this with the pollution, but have you noticed that uh, if you're not on the SkyTrain a lot, you don't get sick as much? Make well, that's because you're mixing with people, right? Yeah, so and obviously it's maybe it's certain times of the year where mm. flus are prevalent, etc. But well, I've got a tight I'm not sure what, what you can do. And I also say with the flu jabs, yep. uh, the, the flu jabs, uh, when you get them, they're probably valid for a year. If yeah, you have to get them it's again. It's supposed to be, yeah, it's an annual thing. Yeah, so I mean, the, the world is changing. Thing is, how can we reduce the pollution? It's obviously cars, that's something's happening with that. We're now yeah. Pushing towards ele ele electric yeah. electric cars, uh, 
Uh, but this is all to do with the weather. We've had our, uh, I'm sure, uh, unusual yeah. weather uh, yeah. with no air. I mean, it's been still because of storms and it's been yeah, where yeah. it just hovers. You know, I mean, I. I be interesting if anybody knows why it's particularly happening. Yeah. It's now you know, send us a message, let us know. Um, yeah, either on sure. YouTube or on Facebook, right? Yes, there's, there's yes. facilities there. Message we do read them. We will read them. You're watching Bangkok Chit Chat. We're going to take a short break and then we're back with what's on. This is What's On. I used to do What's On for a, a magazine, and I used to do hundreds of them. And I, I've still got on my uh, computer all the all the, the things that I need to go to source it all. But it's just so many. So what I do is it's just that it's sort of a sample of what's mm. What's On. I mean, there's Networking Night. You know, Am Chan. Yes, obviously, young professionals. And I'm reading it out because maybe the younger people aren't watching, but the older people that going to send them to it. Ah, so uh, it, well, I just say that, uh, oh, right, for right. the people for the people who are feeling young. Yeah, yeah good one, uh, good one. Right, yeah. it's the very first Young Professionals Networking Night of the Year. So, there's no age group. <laughs> that is tomorrow, uh, January thirty first, and it's this is what I like about these networking at the uh, La Dotta La Grata, oh. which is the ground floor of Satchez Hotel. You know, you know. Yeah, no. I don't know where Satchez Hotel. Well, it's on Second Bit. It's uh, Soy Nineteen. Right. Okay. The, these hotels are springing up everywhere, aren't they? Mm. Yeah. All right. So blah 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 blah. Right now, this one for the kids, uh, literally kids and their parents. Kiss the the school. K I S. Yeah. K I S. I call it Kiss. Kiss. Okay. K I S. Well, it's a children's school. Maybe you shouldn't call it that. <laughs> True that. True that. It's Cassani International School. I never knew that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's soy fifteen, right? Ah. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. No. K K I S What's that one down to fifteen? Have we got an address here? No. Never uh, mind. Well Cassidy International School is uh Pacho Tip ah. Road. So what's the one down to fifteen? I think that's the uh if you the, say it, the, the, the oh, uh, it, My son used to play football there. Yes, it's oh United Nations, is it? No, um, I'm sure it's KISS. No, it's, no not. it's not Kiss, is it? No, it's not. Oh dear, never mind. I, I, can we cut this? Bit? Can I've we cut this bit out? <laughs> apologies for that. Someone can tell us what the, what the school well, is. Families yeah. with young children are invited to join a morning of bugs and butterflies themed fun and games at the uh, KIS's Bugs and Butterflies picnic. Uh, that's on Saturday, February the second, uh, from nine till midday. Picnic features lots of exciting activities, including outdoor play, puppet shows, games, arts and crafts. All families with young children are welcome to join, and the planned activity. Activities are ideal for children from two to six years old. That's entry fee, 400 baht per family. Per family? Yeah, okay. if I had a young one, I, would, I well, used to well, go to this thing. of a family? <laughs> We'd get a good deal, basically. <laughs> uh, there's a Thailand, if you like gadgets, Thailand Mobile Expo. Uh, that's at Bitech, 7th to the 10th of February. Uh, if you're like IT inclined, Thailand Mobile Expo is a mobile exhibition in Thailand. There will, will be the latest technology there for smartphones, tablets, tablets, gadgets, and other IT accessories. Exclusive promotions will be available there as well, so you can get your like your Wi-Fi stuff there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, you, you're not another gadget. smartphone. You can. Yeah. We've got to be smart to use a smartphone. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, Have right you got a smartphone? Yeah. No, you <laughs> like gadgets. I love gadgets. Uh, I, 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 no, I'm, I'm not a, a gadgety person, I must admit. I, I, I get what I need. Yeah, that's oh, right. Oh, okay. Yeah. Big thing coming up in February, Valentine's Day. Now, oh, what's, your, yeah. what's your look on Valentine's Oh, we've got to say something about Australia Day and yes. Children's Day, the, the past. If you're Australian, hope you had a good one. Good day. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, happy Australia Day belated. Yeah, so and Children's Day we had a barbecue with one child, right? Okay. <laughs> Plus me and my son and all that. Although we're old, we're children. Yeah, at well, a lot of people went to Don Muang. Yeah, uh, yeah which we live yeah. right by. God, yeah. those planes are not making a noise going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, my was it good? Two nephews had a, a great time there. Yeah, yeah were a lot of people. Oh, it's I saw the traffic jams around. It. Very, very, very busy. And I think it's great. I think, I think it's good. It also brings a, a, a national pride, which yeah. I, I think is great. So uh, what was it? 
Oh, oh Valentine's. What's your take on Valentine's? Valentine's. Day? Is it a co- he's going to go. I know, it's a commercial mm. thing. Well, it is a commercial <laughs> thing, but I mean, it's just like if, if you want to take advantage of it, you, you take advantage of it. It's, it, it's probably a, a day where you're supposed to be really, really nice and not have a fight, uh, like Christmas. Yeah, but everybody does. <laughs> you know, did they get one rose or twelve roses? Why did you spend so much money? If you bought it yesterday, it'd have been cheaper. You got it the next day after, it'd have been cheaper. I remember uh, when I was you can, never, you can never win. Well, yeah. I went out seventeen because the thing is, you send the card to your loved one without signing it. Right? Oh, I think that's for kids for the. the well, I was seventeen, and I remember I sent it to this girl, and I was so nervous for sending it, and then uh, I never saw her again. She must have known it was from she me. She must have recognised your writing. You probably sat beside her in class. <laughs> you used to tie their pigtails together. You know, you know, I always wonder what was the point of sending a card to somebody they don't know who it's from. Oh, I know. Yeah, okay, they feel oh, somebody really fancies me, and it, wouldn't that just annoy them to know? But I mean, who it it's was? a big thing, and I mean, if if you want to celebrate or or whatever the word is for Valentine's, just Google Valentine's Bangkok, and you'll just get a plethora of, of, of stuff to go. I've just picked one, probably pretty high end, uh, at a restaurant, what was it called? The, the Valentine's Day. Savour a stunning and seductive six course menu at Park Society Restaurant, So Soft Hotel. Now you know that, mm. don't you? Mm-hmm. That's uh, over there somewhere. I, I still haven't got the address. Maybe there, what there. you should do in Valentine's Day is take something so you're going to go away for a weekend to present that on the 14th. That'd be nice. You're planning to have a weekend oh, away. Yeah. Well, true, but I mean, it is a city hotel. No, I'm talking about just for Valentine's Day. In, in oh, in general. general. Oh, yeah. I mean, here at the Soft Hotel, each dish resembles a striking piece of art, all incredibly uh, done for Instagram purposes. So right. these people, they do, then they they go yeah. out to dinner. And I'm just about to start. Stop. Take the picture. Like, of I'm, the kind of, I'm bloody hungry. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, it's going to cost you 3,600 plus plus per person for the six course menu and if you want wine you to go a weekend with away that, for that <laughs> and if you want wine pairings it's another 2,300 All right, on top yeah, of that yeah. and your pa- it says here your, your lady will get a, 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 a rose but I think that's a bit sexist I think it should be your partner gets a red rose no? yeah, but you're not always no, going to take a lady to a Valentine's what do we get what do the guys get yeah. the bill yeah okay, thanks alright <laughs> Uh, something that uh, frightened me, uh, I don't know if it's going to work or not, uh, e tie driving licenses. Uh, s- uh, this is from the, the newspaper Sanuk, reported that the scheme uh, is going to show details of the Thai driving license on your phone that starts started last 15th of January. It's going to be unnecessary to carry the regular plastic license with you if you've applied for this e driving license. Now, I don't know what happens if you got caught in the wrong lane. Normally what happens is the police stop you and they say, come to the police station to pay the fine, right? And they take your license there and then. So if you haven't got your license on you, you've got the phone, what are they gonna do? You make sure you change the battery, so you got a dud battery, change the battery, put the same before it's not working. No, um, I mean, what they, you know what I mean? They hold the the license as a sort of, uh, what's the word? Insurance, Uh, yeah. Insurance. Mm -hmm. So if it's on the, what, they take your phone? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe there's a. I'm not sure how, how it works, to be honest. Well, anyone with an old license can now apply for the new EDL, as it's called, at the Department of Land Transport Offices. You know that over there at Morchid, nationwide. So there we are. And I think that's for Falang as well. Uh, those with the car and motorcycle licenses are eligible. For. But what I think is great is that the, the, the government itself, just, just like every government, they're, they're moving ahead, bringing in technology, making it useful, making it. Uh, uh, accessible uh, yeah. for people I, th- I think it's, it's a good idea how it all works I'm not too sure yeah. uh, but yeah. it's nice to see that progression well it is yeah I mean we were just off camera talking about everything is going to be through your phone yes yeah, which gives you even you a more nightmare when you lose your phone yes I mean have you ever done oh no where's yeah. my phone yeah <laughs> and I mean you just Where's my f- f- phone? <laughs> well, absolutely. <laughs> Phonetic PA. Uh, hey, this is up your street, uh, Bangkok St. Andrew's Society, the Burns Supper. Uh, it's, yep. uh, what is it uh, Burns Night? Is it Burns Birthday or something? Why yes, is it now? Yes, g- generally it's to celebrate Burns uh, uh, and they have some poetry, some songs. Yeah. Uh, an uh, evening it, of wonderful it, Scottish fare, including haggis. Now, what's neeps and tatties? It's basically turnip. Yeah. Sounds better neeps, I think. Yeah. So you get a couple of turnips, a few. What's tatties? tatties. It's 
Potatoes. Oh, I love it actually. I love turnips. Yeah. Okay. Do you roasted? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what else you got? Music and verse, and of course a drama too. Yeah, it's actually a great night. Um, Where is it? Oh, at the British Embassy Gardens. How nice oh, is that? Right. Okay. Yeah. So normally it's at the uh, Amari uh, Watergate. Yeah. So I think this is because the British Embassy is is, is closing. It's yeah. <coughs> but uh, uh, also, all you've been saying about you know, oh, boring. Yeah. But you have an address from the men and the women, an address for the lassies, etc. And it's very very funny. Uh, it's more What's like funny? A, more comedy sketch because what the girls do is bring down the guys, yeah, and the guys bring down the girls. Yeah? It's probably the most sexist two two elements of, of, of the night or of the year. And what do they do? They just just basically take the mickey out of both. Uh, it's like know, a grilling, habit. right? A yeah, roast a bit, of a, bit of a grilling, but it's not political. It's, it's more on, on, on a funny level. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it is it is very good, but also the the chit chat around of the people. Uh, it's it's actually a, a very enjoyable well, evening, especially the re dram or two. The dram. Ah, if you're ever taking haggis, always add a little bit of whiskey to your haggis and mix it in. It's delicious. No ketchup. Yeah. Okay. Haggis is okay, isn't it? Oh, I think people. Yeah, because yeah, but the first thing they say about it's haggis pe is a stomach, you know, and and that puts like. Off loads of people just because you say it's in a cow's stomach. It's in a yeah. cow's stomach. Yeah, well, look at black pudding. No, know. no, I mean, I love, I've had haggis. I love it. It's like a what we used to call faggots. <laughs> All right, you can call it what you want. We don't call it that. Yeah. You, you haven't heard of, of a faggot. A faggot's like minced meat and herbs and all that business, and it's rounded off and it's about that size. Oh, and you that. fry them or you roast them. Yeah, it's just, I think it's what's inside a haggis right, without okay. the, the, the stomach. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's more or less it. Is that it? Have you, oh, yeah, I think so. Uh, once again, thanks for subscribing. We uh, uh, really do appreciate it and liking it. And you can find out how to get in touch with us at the end of the show. Yes, that's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, what is it? It's on on YouTube. You, you, it's, but you have a, you have a, a ticker ticker tape at the bottom with all the all the details of the contact. Oh, we'll have that going by the way. Right. Yeah. It. It's already there. It's yeah. already there. All right. uh, and it'll be at the, be at the end uh, of the video and also with the subscribe button uh, for uh, YouTube that'll give you notify you of new shows that are coming out which are regular yeah. we've uh, checked this out and it does work and uh, what will we also have we have an interview uh, coming up uh, <laughs> you, you've forgotten your timeline haven't you We're, well we've got a, a teacher but he's more than a teacher so the, the interview is not going to be around that's for another day about how people, you know the teaching scene here. But he is a teacher, but he's also uh, lived in Brooklyn in, in New York and he's uh, done acting jobs and everything else. He's a pretty good impressionist as well. So that interview is coming up. Yeah, that's so. coming out in the future. But we have Paul Dixon. Uh, Paul Dixon up, before uh, that. As an interview. Very interesting. He, he's discussing different financial issues. He tried to look at me, your, your medical side. Uh, like the medical insurance thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's informational. Yeah. The, the, so. uh, he's a regional manager of Business Class Asia. That's correct. Yeah. All right then. So until the next time, it's bye bye from me. And bye bye from me. <laughs> See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>
ask a few questions. So how long have you been living in Thailand? I've actually been here um, just over 18 years. So uh, yeah, probably probably one of the longest places I've ever lived. So why, why did you originally come here uh, all uh, these years ago? <laughs> I think um, I was actually, I, I took a year out from work in the UK and uh, literally Traveled the world like a gap year. Took a gap year, yeah, at thirty. <laughs> so uh, quite lucky, really. Lucky to be able to do that. Um, and I was actually heading down to New Zealand. Right. Um, ended up in Thailand for two months. Um, uh, where are you originally from? I'm actually from um, Yorkshire. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've lost the accent, then. I have. Yes. Yes. I've been away a long time. Is that because people have to understand you? Uh, you have to speak clearer, just like having a Scottish accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Even the lifts that. don't understand us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I actually go back to the UK now, and a lot of people think I'm actually Australian. Which, I was uh, going to say that. Yeah. There, there is a bit of an <coughs> Australian yeah. thing so, going uh, for you. Quite a few yeah. colleagues, uh, Aussie and uh, Kiwi colleagues in the past. So, uh, yeah, for some reason I've picked that up. But uh, So, yeah, I was supposed to head down to New Zealand, um, two months in Thailand, had a week in Kanchin at Bury, went down with malaria. Oh wow! And uh, <laughs> ended up back in the UK, and then <laughs> six months of recuperation, and I was back in Thailand. And you decided yeah. after even yeah. after that, <laughs> I'm coming back. Right. A second chance. <laughs> I'm a man malaria. Will I get yeah. it? Again? <laughs> yes, you do. Well, I thought I've had it once. So, you know, I'm safe now. So yeah, you went back. So yeah, I came back. Uh, probably, I think about six months after. Uh, right. Yeah, and looking for work back over here. Yeah, I enjoyed it that much. So yeah. All right. So so you'd be staying here. So. Uh, uh, wh why did you actually choose to stay here? You came in, you decided to come back to town and look for work. You got a job. Yeah. 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 Uh, and why have you stayed so long? Um, I think, you know, when, when, I, when I first came over here, I think, you know, the, the sort of the way the UK was going and, and I think there was a lot in Thailand that, that was similar to, to maybe when I was growing up in England, you know, respect for elders, uh, the way of life, okay, it's totally different. But mm. um, the attitudes that people had at that time 18 years ago was... Yeah, it was very welcoming. Yeah. Well, and of course the economy was, uh, was it picking up by then or, or was it already? 2000 was, yeah. I mean, we had the, the, you know, they had the Asian crisis in 97. So of course by 2000, things were sort of starting to, uh, to move on again. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, it was getting over that. Mm -hmm. So I suppose, yes, it was cost effective to be here because mm -hmm. of the, uh, the exchange rate. No, um, no. Yeah. I think yeah. I think back then it was around seventy-five baht to the pound. We're about. Oh yeah, it was a nightmare yeah. going back to England. <laughs> so the beer was probably about fifty baht. Or something. <laughs> it was uh, yeah. It was it was good to be here then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it still is. Yeah, it's still a good place to be. Oh, it's that's okay. good to hear. So within your industry, uh, from when you uh, I take it when you came across here, you were in this uh, in, a, in a financial the financial financial yeah. industry. Yeah. 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 So. How has that sort of changed? Okay, 1997 was a, was a crash. There's been a few blips in between, yeah? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, but so how, how has it changed? I think the industry, um, I, th I think globally, what we've seen probably since 2000, um, you know, we had the dot-com boom and crash. Um, then of course we had 2007, 2008, um, again, another crash. So we've seen a lot of regulation changes. Thailand has, to a certain extent, you know, followed on slowly, very slowly. Mm. Um, so my industry, to a certain extent, in those days, was very. Um, any anybody could come in and basically open a company, and you know, to a certain extent, sell offshore products. Right. Um, it was, I, you know, I, I suppose realistically, it was a grey area, um, and I think it's what we've actually seen then, because of the regulation changes, uh, we've seen, you know, basically the industry as a whole shrink. Massive, right? Do, so, do, so there's less advi advice <coughs> companies around now than there was a lot less. A lot less. Yeah. Do political yeah. uh, <coughs> things that are going on political wise does that affect your industry or what's happening on the political scene? In my op opinion, and I'm not a professional, mm. it doesn't seem to. <coughs> it's just life goes on. Life goes on. Yeah, I think life goes on. You know, again, it's we, we, you know we we're, we're sort of in an industry that's global now rather than sort of you know we you know, we work in Thailand mm. and yeah mm. we, we're affected with. You know, what, what can happen in Japan or what can happen in right. the US yeah. so yeah it's it's not really internal so politically you see changes I think you know within Thailand we've, we've you know we've, we've seen many changes over the 18 year period but I think also um, you know it, it doesn't really have a major knock-on effect the only part I suppose in 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 my sector is we're pretty much expat focused mm. so we have seen basically troughs through that 18 year period where we've seen mm. a, a sort of 
a lot of expats leaving, a lot of industry yeah. changes. Um, you know, oil and gas, I suppose, to a certain extent. You've seen that sector in Thailand, basically, where a lot of the overseas companies come in, a lot of expats, mm -hmm. you know, set up the industry, get the industries moving, and then, of course, eventually, you know, the Thais come in and basically take over a lot of those positions. So right. mm -hmm. you see that sort of peak and trough. Um, 2007, 2008, again, massive changes with uh, the number of expats over here. Do you think it's, <coughs> my impression is the number of expats in, in Thailand now is, is still reducing? Uh, or, or are some people saying, well, not reducing, it's just people you know that are leaving yeah. and other people are coming in to replace them. I think them. there is yeah. that. I think that is yeah. that. I, look, I think maybe some of the nationalities of the expats are changing. Hmm. Is that right? Yeah. You see industry changes. Yeah. So it's like I said before, oil and gas. Mm. Um, again, um, sort of earlier on in the, in the 2000s, you had a lot here. And again, the industry was set up. So again, certain areas of the oil and gas industry you didn't have as many people here and then of course we had the boom in oil the price went up you know over a hundred dollars per barrel etc mm -hmm. so again you know production was increased more expats came in but that that again was in the offshore area rather than the onshore um uh, places like map to put south of here right um, right the industries down there so you, yeah you've seen the changes mm -hmm. and of course then you're also seeing changes in the industry we've now got more uh, manufacturing car manufacturing um, oh, yeah. Aerospace. That was a biggie, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. In the old days, everything was more, more or less imported. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, aerospace now, yeah. again, yeah. is another industry that's coming on. Uh, In Thailand, yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, it's not necessarily the aircraft themselves, but, you know, the peri peripheral businesses. So, it could be, um, you know, basically aerospace, you know, aircraft interiors, this type of thing, servicing. Right. Um, yeah, so you, you see the changes in this industry is there. So within the marketplace, uh, just now, how, I mean, you, you're primarily dealing with expats, primarily, correct? Yeah, yeah. But do you see a growth in the interest of your services? Because primarily you're dealing about wealth management, mm. etc. Mm. You maybe go a little yeah. bit more detail, uh, yeah. but also you're dealing in property. Uh, I mean, a tie can buy property in the UK. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then also you're dealing with. Uh, Insurance, you know, medical insurance, yeah. employee benefits, yeah. Yeah, uh, that that kind of thing. Have you seen that the, the, the Thais are more interested? Because the reason I'm asking it is because some of the th Thai people, uh, my, my Thai friends, they mm. actually are buying uh, health insurance packages, mm. which you wouldn't expect them to look at because they're they're not Thai companies. They're using oh. using foreign companies yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. as their insurance brokers. Yeah. I mean, maybe they've got, maybe they've, these foreign companies have a, a brokerage license here or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But I'm right. seeing seeing that that some Thai people are actually buying the, the, the packages which are normally mm. targeted mm. at not exclusive for mm. but targeted at expats. Yeah. Are you seeing more of that, or, or are they still going for the local, local I think Thai company? It's you. You still see a lot. I mean, I think you know, the the big insurers will always be there. Yeah, so yeah, you look at AIA, um, AXA, yeah, these, these, these companies are moving further and further into you know, emerging markets, bigger operations in emerging markets. So yeah, the foreign in insurers are actually becoming more, more, more predominant in that industry here. Mm -hmm. um, so if you look at, uh, I suppose, the Thai market, we don't get that, that, that involved with it, but you know, you've had Bupa here for a long time, mm -hmm. which again is a mm -hmm. huge Western brand. Mm -hmm. But Bupa, I think it's Bupa Blue Cross. Um, you know, you, you've got the likes of AIA. I mean, I've been with them since yeah, since late eighties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so I think the you know the, the the way the local market looks now, you know, is it a good thing? I'm not really sure. But there's more products, more services. You know, more opportunities coming into the market, more sophisticated products coming into the which market. is good for the consumer. Yes, in the sense no. that they get a <laughs> they get more choice. <laughs> yeah, you've got more competition. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you know, I'm, I'm sort of old school in the fact that I like to keep things very simple, very clear, very transparent. Mm. And I think sometimes, you know, on the insurance side of things, okay, that's very simple. You have a policy, etc. On the investment side of things, I think sometimes you know there are there are instruments or parts of the industry where really it's not suitable for a retail investor right um, uh -huh. so on that side of things I think you know some things are good but I think you know keeping things very simple is probably but really the, just in the case of medical insurance you know, why would somebody 
because we can buy either mm. as, 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 as expats, you know, yeah. working, work privates, etc. Yeah. Um, so why would why would uh, why would why shouldn't we be looking at the the Thai packages as opposed to is there a difference in big difference in price or is it all just related to this is your coverage and it's going to cost you this amount. Uh, because they're all different products. Yeah. They have, they have yeah. life insurance attached to health insurance, the Thai side, yeah. and then they get money back. But yeah. then, if they're all there to make money, so yeah. so is yeah. it just a smoke, smoke and mirrors, or, or no, what? not necessarily? I think um, I think if you you know as, as an expat, if if you're not travelling, um, they have again different policies. So you can have a global policy. Most of them exclude the US because it's so expensive. Yeah. Um, so you can have a global policy, which, like, like I say, covers you wherever you go. So if you if you're back in Europe or you know, mm. Australia, you're covered there. If anything happens to you, if if you don't, you know, maybe for a, a semi-retired or a retired expat who predominantly spends 52 weeks of the year in Thailand, then look for a local policy. Maybe yeah. you trip over to, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, Vientiane, or you go down to Cambodia, or you go down to Singapore. Mm -hmm. Then look for an Asian. ASEAN policy. Right. So again, it, it really is about what does the client need and right. matching okay. that. So you, you can do that. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, that's good. Uh, now, within the, you're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not a financial advisor as such, you, you basically uh, help people through getting insurance and also the, the management of their wealth yeah. and, and building, building plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what yeah. you call life plans. Life yeah. plans that's right. um, but you're not trying to sell them packages of uh, fixed term and things like that. So no. you're, 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 you're different from other organizations, as I understand it. Yeah. I've also had to do some research on what they're, what they're doing. <laughs> but I'm going to ask, I, you know, gonna have to, uh, ask, ask a, a question. <clears throat> yeah. We all get calls. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and for me, if someone calls me up, I'm more than happy to speak to them. Sure. That's fine. Yeah. Because they've got a job like anybody else. Yeah. If I'm not interested in something, I'll obviously turn around and say, well, I'm not doing mm. anything just now. So mm. sure, you can call me back in six months yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah. Everyone's got a job to do. Everyone should be polite. Exactly. I've heard some people telling people to F off and all this sort of stuff. Yeah. I just think that. That's Mind you, after the 20th one in one day, <laughs> you know, everyone's got quite as much as that. But in the 2000s, but it was some, a lot of calls. Some of it is, mm. some, some of your, some sort of, uh, being upset sometimes warranted, as you say, because yeah. it's non stop. And then mm. you said to the person to call you next week, next week, next week, oh, they've got a new person's come on, they've got another list, and they're calling you again. Yeah, yeah come yeah. on, I told you. Fly that guy selling sunglasses um, on the beach, you know, the first one you're super polite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the 20th time, you're kicking him all the way down. Go away, go away. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Unless they're selling views. Uh, so, <laughs> eventually, move off the beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, with that sort of, uh, let's say, Stereotype, which yeah. is probably t reputation. Sure. Uh, basically, why why has it got that rep got that reputation a, a negative connotation? Why why is that? Yeah. Um, Over the years, yeah, it's probably been built up. Good question. I think I think you know, I think I think anywhere we go in the world, it's probably probably got that reputation. The industry's got that reputation. Um, I know you know working through the CISI in the UK. Yeah, we had the same issues in the UK. Right. Um, we had the re retail distribution just after, uh, sorry, the retail distribution review just after um, the financial crisis in the UK. And, you know, it was a case of where, you know, how can we protect retail investors or retail clients? Yeah, right. We're not talking corporate, um, corporate businesses, but I think, you know, there's, there's a lot of people in the industry that basically maybe weren't qualified go into the you know industry really just looking for the quick buck right you know they, they, they have a short-term plan um not, not qualified or uh, not necessarily not qualified you know i think you know, if you look at some of the cases that came up in the uk after you know um after the financial crisis well not just the uk but but globally um you know there were people there that you know chasing the profit basically mm -hmm. you know i think if you're in the industry you need to go into you know any meeting or or you know, with, a, with a retail client, as I said, we, we, we distinctly, you know, segregate types of clients. But if you go into a, a retail client meeting, then, you know, you're basically sitting down with somebody and you need to get the information from them to give them, you know, and work with them in their best interests. Right. Whereas, you know, if you're in a position whereby, okay, regulation, does regulation stop that from happening? Not necessarily. Right. Um, but yeah, you, you, you've had it in the past where ba basically people have been sold products, services 
investment that weren't suitable. Right. Okay. Yeah. There's um, a, a good question here because we've got to move on. Uh, I'm getting signals from the producer <laughs> <laughs> saying that uh, we're, we're, we've got a, we're, we've got a running out of time soon. With Brexit looming uh, and the confusion in the markets that that's going to bring, what would mm. you advise people should do with their money? Uh, I think again, it, you, you've you've got to look at your time frame. Um, you know, we we will always have you know these sort of dips within the market, and we will always have. Um, you know, people call it financial crisis, but I think you know you've got to look at the time frame. I think if you're looking as a new investor now, or you have mm. new money now, mm. then I think you know Ray Dalio from Bridgewater is probably one of the guys that I follow the most, and again, one of the most successful investors out there at the moment. You know, is hold. You know, I think basically really the market have it where you like in the bank at yeah. very low interest, liquid. Yeah, keep yeah. it liquid, um, low interest. And uh, yeah, I think we're in the, you know, as I said, Ray Dalio, the, the way he puts that across is, you know, we're probably 12 to 18 months out from the end of this current cycle, okay. this current right. financial right. cycle, so yeah. What about the, the local site, uh, local investment, what should people be doing with their, with, their, with their money? Yeah. Locally, I think at the moment, it's probably the same. You know, we've got the election coming up here pretty soon. Mm. Um, yeah, it's been pushed out a few times now. Um, where, where, where should they put their, put their money? I mean, I know the LTFs, RTFs, the reti- uh, the LTF is long term uh, managed funds, uh, <coughs> RTF is retirement managed funds. Yep. So, as I understand it, LTF, if you're not looking to retire very soon, yeah, uh, go to the LTF because you can cash it in after I think it's seven mm-hmm. years. Yeah? Yeah. <coughs> RTF, uh, you can cash it in when you're 55. Yep. Yeah? Yeah. So, <coughs> you will get the return, but your, the big benefit is. Uh, as I understand it, correct me if I'm wrong, is that you get 10% uh, of that investment amount back as a tax rebate. Yeah. So it's like a 10% interest for that period. So if you take that across five years, you're talking about you know 2% yeah, yeah. Uh, across a fi- five year period. Exactly. Yeah. So you're getting that guaranteed straight away, it's not dependent on the markets. But also, you will get dividends from mm-hmm. certain certain ones. So yeah, and of course that is your your capital could change yeah. in that. Yeah. So is there anything you know, like these things? Anything else they should be looking at? I think if you life you know, insurance is, as well. Life, life insurance, you, you can get your tax breaks as well. I mean, you know, we, we look at the whole the whole structure. So yeah, retirement, have your retirement plan in place. Yeah, get that in place as soon mm-hmm. as you can. Right. Because it's basically cheaper if you start early. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, and of course, protection, life insurance. Yes, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, these these things basically ha- having that plan in place. Um, if you have a family, life insurance is a must. Um, if you're long term, I think long term expat, then you should look at the local products because of the tax breaks that are available. Right. Yeah. If you're here, you know, maybe on a two or three year contract, then yeah, maybe they're not suitable. Yeah, you may be moving on to another country in two or three years, and then of course you want to look at something that's tax efficient. And can protect you while you're moving around globally. Right. Okay. Um, so yeah, there, there there are structures out there that we can put in place for that. Okay. Uh, just a little, you're also into international property. You also deal local property. Yeah. Yeah. We have a company that uh, that actually does local buy and sell rents. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah. <coughs> we hear all these people investment in the UK. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what about the invest inve- investing in the UK is the right time because there's predictions that with Brexit, what could happen sure. is. That the prices maybe <coughs> aimed at <coughs> London are going to drop. Yeah, yeah. So are you going into negative equity? Uh, London's already dropping, um, and and again, I think you know with uh, with what's happening, it's very difficult basically to see you know where property prices will go at the moment. But you know, coming back to investing, why are you investing? Yeah, you know, are you looking for the quick capital gain, or are you looking for the income? So if you're looking for a yield off the you know off the property, then. Yes, that's still the way to go. There's still opportunities there in the UK. There are probably still opportunities globally in certain cities. But mm. as I said, it, it, it comes down to why are you investing? What are you looking for? Are you looking for that quick capital gain? Probably not a good time at the moment. If you're looking for long-term capital gains, yes, property is still a solid investment, You know, st- still a solid asset. But again, people look at property for different reasons. Look at the yield. Yields in London, very low. If you look at the... UK, probably Manchester, Birmingham, a lot better yields, five, six, seven percent, this type of thing. So, okay. yeah. Right. Well, we've well, got a lot of time, but we'll just, could, just, uh, uh, am I correct in saying this? <coughs> uh, when I look, looking at international property, I was told that you should look at a place uh, for a property which 
has a football football field, <laughs> which go. has a university, yeah. Yeah? yeah, and all these things that attract people, especially if you're looking at student sure, property. Sure. Is that a yes or a no? No, I'd say yes, definitely. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, well, that's it for. Well, first of all, thank you very much for this. Nice thank to you. Have you? Yeah. Good to meet you guys. I learned a load. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got another show coming up on the thirteenth, uh, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel at the end of this video. Uh, like and share on YouTube and Facebook would be great. Thanks for tuning in to Chit Chat. That's it from me. And that's it from me. And that's it from him. Yeah. Thanks very much. See you, See you next again. time.